Hello, folks. Good evening, good evening. Hello, Wikifish. Hello. We can do, we can do a volume check as well. Reporting for duty. Of everyone. But yeah. We're up to round three now. How doesn't time fly? <sighs> super late. So I'm not super late. This is on time for me. This is very much on time for me. Thank you very much. Two minutes late. <laughs> Top over to this. Are you gonna understand that we've got? There you go. I can do a volume check on Wikifish. Make sure Wikifish is audible. Should be good here. Yeah, I think you got you on the correct. I basically boosted your volume, so you should be audible. And then we go Sensation. Ahead. It happened. Wow. Actually, finally, the moment we have today. all dreamed yeah, about. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Police Code, for the sub. Much appreciated. I'd salute, but I'm currently PNG. Which is kind of saluting anyway, so you get the best of both worlds. Worth noting, Pixicode, absolute lifesaver for the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Complete and total legend, yeah. Huge thanks to Pixicode for basically stepping up. Have I eaten a sunflower seed? No? Not entirely sure where to go with that one, to be honest, but no. But yeah, it is now round three of the soup, uh, the soup kitchen tournament. <laughs> Am I supposed to be eating sunflower seed? Oh, it's a, have I ever eaten a sunflower seed? Okay, <laughs> I thought, thought you were like, I just, I, just, I just ate one. Like, no, I haven't eaten one lately, no. I have eaten some sunflower seeds in the past. It's been a while. Objectively, no, not better, but medication is magic. Friendship is magic, too. I have a special friendship with my coffee. <laughs> is, it a pro is, it, is, it, is it a proper coffee? It is. Nice. I do hear you have very good coffee over there. I hear tales. Um, we potentially have very good coffee. It really depends where you go. Experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have the potential of good coffee. Let's put it that way. Mm. It, it, everything matters where you go. Looks no game sound. Okay, let's fix that then. Mm. Now we should have game sound. This is why we do these tests. I'm terrified of being nameless. I only had one start. But the run and obliterate everything to the point where my fleet can't get XP. Ah, my neck. That's my knuckles. But yeah, so we're now round three. Um, this is after two weeks of, of fiddling with fleets. We have our eight fleets back again. We have our scalar tech. We have our SRA. We have... Um, our high tech, our uh, interstellar imperium, we have our Magellan, we have our LOA, and we have our midline and our low tech. We'll go through them one by one eventually. Pure tilt, you're an absolute monster. I know what you did. <laughs> so you shall read um, everything. We have, we think, um, this is probably the one we have most things because I, I must read names for Pure tilt and Pyrophage specifically made me uh, change. A change list for the fleet, which is very helpful for me. <laughs> Underdog basically catched up with prime mean time. In which case, I do more than one a week. <laughs> you can't catch up to me unless you do more than one a week. Right. So the first round of the day, of the evening, or of the morning. Um, now we'll read it, because it's a very beneficial paraphrase. I'm very thankful that you did that for me. It was actually really, really helpful. Um, so I will go through it. Um... So we have our first match is Pure Tailed Scalar Tech versus Pyrophage's SRA. And there's definitely been changes across the board. Because um, there definitely weren't two core sets last time. 
so we have. <laughs> I'm reading. Am I reading names then? Okay, there's the Nekoark, Nekoark, the Nekoark, Nekoark, the Nekoark, Nekoark, the Nekoark, Nekoark, the Nekoark, Nekoark without a space, the Neko, Neko underscore arc, and the Nekoark without a space without a capital A there either. Absolute monster. <laughs> I pronounced all of those differently. Um, so, okay, the tresses are running twine interceptors and harpoons. No other weapons. I uh, did have a bit of a moment when I was reviewing this fleet and, and looking over the cost of all of the fighters because some of the fighters in there are like 26 OP each, but they're the built-in ones. <laughs> so they're getting in for free kind of thing. Exactly so, exactly so. There are a few factions that are really starting to nudge up against the limits, both of how many fighters they're allowed and, and OP costs, total of fighters. Hmm. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. Okay, so we have one, two, three tresses running between them six twine wings and six harpoon pods. I think this, I think this one's relatively sensible, except for maybe the sabbats, which we're starting to see in tournaments again. <laughs> We have two cor uh, two corsets running each two plane drone wings, and sabo pods and tachyon lances and tausal fleshette guns, and oh some PD as well. Good. <laughs> Make sure that we haven't swung all the way back to the PD again. We have and then three sky class running sabos, tausal fleshette guns, and attacking. So that's. That's actually seven Tachyon Lances in the Scalar Fleet. And the Tachyon Lances, of course, in AI hands, extremely effective sometimes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Seven Tachyon Lances, <laughs> seven Sabo Tachyon Tachyon Lances, Lances, particularly rude. Sorry? That's, uh, uh, sa sabos and Tachyon Lances are particularly rude. Oh yeah, absolutely. Good. Lot of pressure. <laughs> the high, oh, look, oh, you're high flux. Tachyon Lance doesn't care. Mm. Okay. My hardened shields, ITUs. Very, very forthright, this fleet of things. It's, 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 go, it's going in there to do a specific thing. Let's see how well it can go. So where are the, where are the officers? There's one officer on one of the tresses. One officer on one of the corsets, and one officer on one of the skies. So to, all, on all the skies, five officers total. So the three skies are officered as well. Steady. This is the part of the tournament that I really like. Hang on, like, so this, round, this one, is round one is a bit of a steady, mess. steady, 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 steady. Ah, uh, that could be a problem. That could be an issue. Remembering, as soon as they start losing, even by a little bit, they'll drop down one notch. So we could see a whole bunch of cautious ships right off the bat very quickly. Huh. Uh, and the yardies, we have the SRA. I'm just switch over to the SRA, and I'll bring up the notes because that's very, very official. Very helpful, these notes, so let me bring them up real fast. Okay, so Pure of Pirates of Sarays. So, um, the Varder, the Ninurta, and the Delphi have, re have remained behind. The Lobatus and the other Delphis have been removed, as long as with the Kobaloi, Kabaloi variants. Mm. Um, the Varder downgrades its wing from the... Because um, they, had, they, they had the Shikomi. From the Shikomi to the to the skinwalkers so that it can it can take insulated engines, retains flexible general purpose weapons loadout. And I think they're still nudging up on the total OP limit of wings for SRA. Mm. Very high. Yeah. Um, so we also have a Charybdis now as well, running two Shikomi wings, two skinwalker wings, and well as well as a Wraith drone wing. Um, support fighters along with the Dullahan and Skinwalker wings. Dullahan? What's a Dullahan wing? This is, this is Scotty. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're correct. Sorry, my mistake. Ladrex, yeah. The Dullahan wing is here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was looking at the Scotty. This is the Scotty. Looking at the Shikomi wings. Um, and there's the Charybdis. The Ninurta Scotty running two Shikomi wings. Yeah, you're definitely going up because there's quite a lot of fighters now. That's four Skinwalker Wings, two Shikomi Wings, the Dullahan Ring, 
Wraith drone wings over there. There's, there's a Sargasso. There's two Sargassos there as well. And SRA, of course, having both very effective fighters for their points cost, and also a large range of fighters that cost potentially a lot. Hmm. You have the things like the Sukomi, which is basically small, which is essentially a sort of a frigate, and mm -hmm. you have some very, very cheap fighters that can do a lot of really good work too. And the remaining points buys three flavors of close of of, uh, of, of close range Chesky's. Each with slightly different loadout. So we have one here running a Murti Cas Beam and a Splinter Rocket Launcher. The other one's running a Lightning Gun. The other one's running a uh, Murti with a Stiletto instead. Let them know. I heard them when they said three surprise. different Delphys were marking, making their job harder, so I fixed that. Therefore, <laughs> now I think there's one Delphi now, there's only the Sniper Delphi left. But huge more variety of ships here. Hey, reloaded brother! Welcome. So yeah, I do like SRA ships in general, and I like I mean, the Charybdis is awesome. Let's look at weapons. Like we were kind of looking just at stuff. So we have stiletto wings, wave pulse cannons, storm blasters on the Scardi, wave pulse cannon, chain gang CPCs on the Charybdis as well. The Sargassos are running. Baragos. These aren't sorry. These, these weren't. These were Baragos. Um, so they have they have LRM support as well, and the Barago just looks cool. It's one of those missiles that I think it has a really nice visual effect. Well, go for the first flight. A lot of the other fleets starting to run a lot of empty mounts, but uh, not SRA. No. Right here we go. Pure tail. I, I think this is the. I think this is the round where we're seeing the least amount of safety overrides, just overall. Hmm. Okay, let's see how this works out. Incoming corsets, skies, and tresses. All the fighters are out. A lot of fighters, but nowhere near as many fighters as the SRA, with essentially two dedicated carriers. Oh, a dedicated carrier and a combat carrier as well, and it's the, the two sargasses. Oh, I guess three dedicated carriers and a combat carrier. Oh, huge quality difference as well. We're talking maybe what thirty points of fighters versus one hundred and thirty OP of fighters. Yeah, and there wasn't that there wasn't that much point defense on the on the on the skill attack side. Mm. Here comes skill water wings. The rear. So the skies are being pushed already. The Charybdis, Charybdis is moving in though. It's one of the it's one of the issues I have with the Charybdis. The Charybdis is a combat carrier that thinks it's more combat than it is. Every time. It's always very aggressive and it is gonna get punished for it, I think. It's at half health already. Beams with the AI is always very interesting, because at shorter ranges they tend to pull themselves off course, but at longer ranges we're seeing those tacular launches really sweep the sky. They've been quite effective against the fighters. Hmm. Sasuke goes down. Second Sesky down. Think of the Varders coming in. Engaging against with one of the the corsets. And the Scotties being engaged by two skies. Varder can't quite deal with the corset, unfortunately, so it's backing out of it. We've had a lot of Sabos come out, we've had a lot of pressure. Hmm. But I think SRA is successfully backing off. Oh, here we go. Scotty, there's Varder managed to put some shots directly into the front hull of the corset. Although it is being focused by essentially four Tachyon Lances now. This is the most pressure this Varder's ever seen in the tournament so far. Over. That was beautiful shot there. I think it turned into shields and the Wave Pulse Cannons just deleted the entire health of that corset in, in under a second. It's down already. That was impressive. Because it went from like full health to nothing in the space of a few seconds. It put down its shield briefly and then the high explosive just came in and tore the armor off. That's a huge vent over on the left. Yep, it's being pressured too much. There's too much flux. It can't fire its weapons off because, of course, whenever it fires its attacking lances, its own flux rockets up. 
So it's trying to keep shields up. It can't. Whenever it's shields down, the wave pulse cannons. I really just... like those tachyon lances. I, th I think it was a solid choice. Mm. I think we might start to see more mixed munitions. We start to have a high flux weapon and also a, a, an efficient flux weapon for exactly these situations. Mm. Unfortunately, both corsets are down. So we're down to three tresses and the three skies. So the capitals are down. Oh, there was a course at a cruiser, I can't tell. It smells like a capital to me. This now is basically will what will happen to the remaining ships. Here comes the one of the skies getting swarmed by. The flight is gonna start to take over. Yeah. Sky taking damage. Sky goes down because the Vardar could turn to engage. And it was also being attacked by both Sargassos as well. This guy's being focused by the Delphi, the Vardar, the Ninurtas, the Seski, <laughs> the Skadi. This is a very, very bullied sky. Yep, the second sky goes down. Third sky is 1v1ing the Charybdis. But that crib just got scared early on, but did manage to successfully disengage, and now it is there just distracting. Ooh, and got off that huge vent. Hmm? That was absolutely massive. Whenever I see a capital ship vent, it's always incredibly impactful. We, we, we are definitely seeing that that steady start to come into play. Oh god, here it comes. Skinwalker wings, the Shikomis are here as well. Terrifying as it is. Yep. Immediately down to half health. And that's a dead sky. All that's left is the three tresses. And they're just basically, they've all, all they've got are the fighters and the harpoons, so they'll pop fairly quickly. One's popping right now. The Scotty's fighters and the Crypt, the Cryptus fighters in this case are coming down to deal with the tress over here. Was it the Shikomi's here as well, so the Scotty is supporting. Second dress is down. Tress is already out of harpoons as well, so it's literally only got its carry its um, fighters as weapons. Oh, it's painful. It has been quite interesting. Like we, we know Sabos win tournaments. Hmm. Just straight up. And they brought a lot of Sabo. There was, I think, um, Yes, as far as Forrest missing in chat is, this, I was going through when I was going through the the refit. There's, like, there's not a lot of PD on in the scalar side, and given the amount of fighter support on in SRA, that really, really punished them. I was afraid the, the those two courses is the most pressure the Vardar's ever been in. So this tournament so far, that's the most pressure the Vardar's ever been under, and it would have been very very helpful it had the Charybdis died early on as well, because the Charybdis, again, is a huge source of several yep. fighters. Yep. And they were very close, I and mean, it was very, very close. They, just, they managed to back out. I, I was sure it was going to die. Because the Charybdis, again, whenever the AI gets its hands on a Charybdis, for me, it's, it's like, oh, it's a, it's a strike carrier, and they focus more on the strike bit than the carrier bit, and they tend to get very aggressive and tend to charge in. And um, it, it did. It does have a decent weapons loadout, so it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag. No, when it, it works, it works. But it has the guns. It just doesn't have. It is. It's just not survivable. And it can't be tanking. Exactly. Like it, it's got the guns for it. It's got the wings for it. It just can't be tanking. And I think. And something of it makes it think that it can. But yeah, very good round. For, and you said that a lot of your testing for all of this was incredibly swinging both ways for all the fights. For all of them. Yeah, all the fights it's were insane. very swinging in testing. So again. Had the Charybdis died first, I don't know what it would have happened because it would have freed up one of the other skies to support, and it would have been a whole list of like small effects that might have dominoed the other way. Good, good, good example from Pyrophrage. Um, depending on your on your engine layout, having insulated engines absolutely huge. Hmm. Uh, if you do have very few engines or engines way out to the side, having a flame out on one side will definitely mess with the AI. 
it's really super relevant for SRA in general because of where the, they have lots of small engines all over the sh all over the shop. Yep, yep. Was at least one of those skies SO? No, I believe they were not. They have exactly the same loadout, so they're not SO at all. ITUs and hardened shields only. Generally, when the Varder managed to get one of those Corsets' shields down, like those wave pulses do so much damage to, un to unshielded ships. Why is it? I'm trying to figure out. Hang on, not this fleet. I'm specifically the other, the other second fleet, the SRA fleet. So that's specifically that's unique to to this wave pulse weapon, the twenty percent chance to cause extra damage on unshielded ships. Yeah, from the Red Wing upgrade. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's not part of a, a, a normal wave pulse cannon. That's specifically yeah. the wave pulse repeater here, and that hurts. That does really hurt. Builds up over time. Do all wave pulses have that effect? Really? Oh, but they do. Fair enough. In which case, it's even more dangerous. <laughs> even, even more dangerous. Even four hundred. Ah, uh, the difference is the burst as well. This this one fires a shot every 0.75 seconds, where this fires a burst of three. Slightly faster. Yeah, because 0.75, 0.75 is 150, then yeah, so it fires it has a slightly faster rate of fire. Still. It is a very interesting doctrine with high tech in general or high, high mobility ships where you've got that ultra burst in there and you, you you generally don't see it in vanilla except for except for the large weapons except for very in very restricted cases because it is so powerful speaking of which high tech <laughs> indeed hello lightning the big arm should probably cast absolutely yeah like i said i think the, the both both the, the casts on on in, in the Varder helping out a lot as well. Right, so now you have Pixie Code's high tech versus uh, Ruddy Great's um, Imperium fleet. The Imperium fleet's vastly changed from last week. Last week it was three three Kaisers and Olympus. Now we've gone very wide, but we're starting off with Pixie Code's high tech, the Chrono Donut team, with a plasma cannon based Paragon. <laughs> uh, four plasma cannons. You'd love to see it. Okay, it's either four plasma cannons or four tachyon lances. I'll take four plasma cannons. Ooh. I, I, I'm really undecided about it. Maybe, maybe two plasma at the front and, and, and two tachyons at the back? Uh, the plasma, of course, and, and the tachyon beams with the long fire. So helmsman helmsmanship paragon as well. With unstable yeah, injector. Huge difference. <laughs> with unstable injector. So we, we will see it be able to swing around a lot more to face. Mm hmm. And again, stabilize shields and harden shields because this thing's a tough nut to crack at the best of times. Plenty of point defense as well, and heavy needlers. Um, empty mounts at the back? Yeah, empty, empty at the mounts. We have four long range PDs, um, a burst PD, an ion beam, and four swarmer SRMs. And okay, we have a couple of scabs. Just make sure I'm not skipping anything. Oh, three, three. Three scarabs running five pulse IR pulse lasers each. There's 15 IR pulse lasers dashing around with hardened shields, hardened subsystems, and unshield conversions. Those scarabs have generally been quite good in previous rounds. Hmm. And temporal shell helps a lot and just goes down there and just basically five IR pulse lasers adds up very quickly. And it's essentially 750 DPS. Per scarab. In theory, you might want to use more more burst weapons or, or, or something with a bit more temporary punch, but no, the, the pulse lasers are just solid. Mm -hmm. Then we have three omens running AM blasters, flare gun, and PD, burst PD laser. AM blasters on the omens. Hope to see them get in there and get some really good shots off. 
And then you have yeah, almost a requirement for a high tech fleet, but you don't you don't really ever want to see them in heavy combat. <laughs> hey, Trick Uh And then we have a couple of Kronos running phase lances, proximity charge launchers, some point defense, and auto pulse laser, as well as advanced optics for the phase lances. See, these things are absolute monsters. They 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 move incredibly quickly. Yeah, because of the, because of the uh, time accelerators and stuff. So, these lances in Chrono Field, but go burr. I'm sure we will find out. And then we have a couple of vortexes running, Falx interceptors and wasp drones, as well as AM blasters, proximity charge launchers, mm. and some point events. The wasps, of course, bringing the additional uh, charge launchers. That is, that is quite a lot of flack. Yeah. And also and also on the Falks. The Falks have two Stinger launches each. There's four there and six oh, there. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. A lot of little bomblets flying around. <laughs> if they can get the wraparound, if they can get the early advantage, we, we, we might see some very interesting things from high tech. Mm. But Interstellar has gone very wide. Yeah. And on the flip side, we have really great Interstellar fleet running one, two, three Decurians. The Decurians running a Pulsar, Repeater, Heavy Machine Guns. Oh, of course, the, the, excuse, this is called PDAC is good, I promise. So we have PDSL conversions on, I think, pretty much everything. Um... Pulsar repeaters, siege mortar, and heavy machine gun. I think with PD assault converters, it means that there is a lack of PD here. <laughs> because it means PDs don't lo no longer target missile or prioritize fighters. So, which actually should be fine against the high tech fleet. Because all the, the high tech fighters are mostly defensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's not many missiles on the high-tech side. I mean, they're, they're, they've got defensive loadouts, but they'll probably be used in an, in an offensive placement. So it'll be quite interesting. Hmm. You have three of these running Imperial targeting packages as well, so... The time booster as well, so they're also acceleration, accelerating time. Um, and the Pulsar repeaters and the machine guns. And we have three Princeps running Draconarius fighters, so that's... Six Draconis, 18 Draconarius fighters, which is 36 Ballista LRMs off the fighters alone. Mm. And then we have several Funday mm, pods. Could swing it. Yeah, several Funday pods as well. From lots of anti craft. Again, there, there's, the, there's the, the, the point defense there. I suppose the, the, the Princeps haven't got, hasn't got PDAC. So they have dual flat cannons and several Funday pods for fighter clearing. Or fighter clearers. And then we have three uh, legionaries running PDACs with heavy machine gun, a pulsar repeater, light needlers, pulsar cannons, and the Sabo pods coming up again, and the targeting package as well. So they've got the overdrive, super, uh, super uh, rate of fire. And we have a singular lynx running twin lightning guns, twin ion torpedoes. Twin Iron Cannons, a Sabo Pod, Imperial, so it's the Empowered Shockbuster. Then we have an Ixion running Light Ballistas, Proximity Charge Launchers, and the Armageddon Launchers, which uh, is the armor package, so the, the, the Magnum Salvo is a Funday uh, Merv. I do like the Ixion. The Ixion is one of the ships I really like the idea of. And a matriarch at the very end, which is what we're all here to see. Running two Vicarious Fighter Wings, two Draconarius Fighter Wings, and two Flamin Fighter Wings. Siege Mortars, Arc okay, so Assault Cannons, yep. We've got a very, very interesting situation developing. So there's, there's wide fleets and there's wide fleets. You can have wide fleets where every ship provides pressure. Hmm. Or you can have wide fleets, but some of them are support, and they're designed to hang back. So they're not actually part of the, the, the flanks, they're not part of the enveloping. They're more, if we happen to survive and our flanks hold, they provide additional benefit. 
Interstellar Imperium has a lot of support ships, but they also have a huge amount of kinetic pressure. You, of course, got the ion torpedoes in there, which I was also wondering if we'd see those in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge difference in terms of just absolutely knocking a ship out for several seconds. They can absolutely swing a fight. So I'm, I'm going to be quite curious to see which, which, which fleet manages to get the envelope. This is still again. I was thinking all, 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 the, all the Custos Defenders. Yeah, but there's, there's, there's PD Assault Conversion, so these are actually aggressive Custos Defenders. And the Command Center as well, which increases the speed of all their fighters by a flat 250. Fighter projectile range by flat 250 and projectile speed by 50%. I'm interested to see how this works out, because it's a huge change of direction for II from the immense tallness of last week to the immense wideness. I think it's a good change. Hmm. I think it's certainly fun. an exciting change. I'm keen to see how it goes. Yeah, it'll be fun to fun, it'll definitely be fun to watch. Here we go. Hmm. A lot of little time shenanigans. The uh, scarab just pushing the omen out of the way there. As they move to the point. Right, shall we see the, the ballista waves? Look at the Kronos portraits. Robo, I approve. That's why my game was crashing earlier, because it didn't have the Robo portrait. <laughs> I, had to, I had to basically go digging into the files to find the Robo portrait. Okay, here we go. Mundakurian goes down, immediately popped by the, by the Centurions. Centurions now attacking the Legionary. Although one Centurion's high, one of the Kronos is right, is not, not Centurion, Kronos, it's high flux. Legionary goes down, the Paragon is here, the Paragon hasn't had a chance to shoot anything yet. Here comes I think whether the Paragon can get off a good, a good vent is going to be absolutely critical. Hmm. Here comes high tech. The Kronoses are being pressured, they're, but they're not being pressured enough. They're managing to keep their shields up. The Matriarch has engaged one of the Kronos. Lynx goes down, though. Kronos manages to take out the Lynx. A lot of the Ion support and Lightning Gun support is gone. Legionary goes down. A little bit of hull Just damage against the there. Ooh, Princeps trying to engage against the Kronos, but the Kronos will vastly outperform it. Ooh, I think that is high tech with the envelope. Yep, high tech pulls off the envelope, even though it's not as wide as as Imperium was before. There's not too many support ships in high tech. No. There's there's a, a carrier, mm -hmm. but uh, most of the ships that they have are participating in the envelope. Yep. And a lot of the frontline ships, the legionaries, have pretty much disappeared at this point. Hmm. So all we have now are a couple of Decurians, a couple of Princeps, the Ixion, and the Matriarch. The Curian goes down. The control points are starting to get pressure. Yeah. It might actually be a shame. Because now the, the Kronos coming from the back, so it's hitting the Ixion from the back. Ixion's already at half hull. Ixion goes down. Ikurion goes down. Princeps being hit by those phase lances and the Ultra Pulse laser. And the Ion Beam. Princeps is down. The, the Paragon is flickering its shields in order to start to manage its flux, but I think it's just a little bit too late. Too little too late. Princeps is down. That was the old, old Princeps. Nature are trying its best here, but look at look at the PD lasers on the on the scarab though. Look at those PD lasers go. With the temporal shell active as well. <laughs> that is a that is a definition of pew pew right there. Here come the, pa here come, here come the, pl the plasma gun shots. 
We're seeing a much more offensive high tech because we're seeing a lot of ships that are very, very overfluxed. So they'll often go up to half hard, hard flux, and then the rest will just be soft flux that they can play with at will. An omen died apparently. Not sure when that happened, but an omen did die, so it's not a shame for Imperium. But it may have died due to sympathetic explosions, I think. More a scarab. More a scarab. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely an omen. I think Imperium only really had like three frontline ships in the, in the legionaries, and they just couldn't stand up to um, essentially the Paragon and the two Chronos. Yeah, their front line did fold a little bit fast. That, that is one of the risks of going of going wide, hmm. that you don't have quite as much staying power. I, I think it is a good direction, though. I think he's generally on the right path. Mm -hmm. I have sent Wikifish a Magellan text file. What changes it from round two to round three? Huh. No, 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 that, 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 is, that is not okay. No, nobody in this day and age sends RTF files. This is uh, a... <laughs> An RTF okay. file? Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Real text format. I don't know the last time I've seen an RTF file, Jesus. Right. Next we have nice open office. Fair enough. Uh all right, Pixie Code Magellan versus Forest Fighters uh LOA. And there have been some slight changes, definitely I think in in the LOA. The changes must be replacing all the missiles with breaches, replacing the foxes with a Sherman, and some observations have certainly, <laughs> have certainly forgotten. Well we shall all learn about them together. Now, breaches have been quite an interesting one with, with other fleets. Hmm. Uh, they're, they're certainly putting out a significant amount of DPS. Alright, see, so the... Oh, it's actually, actually going to be an interesting question, because while, while we're talking about this, because there's, there's actually a comment on last week's tournament on my channel questioning about um, one of the weapons. So I'll, I'll ask it now. Someone, someone posted this. Um, I noticed the, the Bone Crusher has 1200 DPS at 900 range, which is high sustained DPS, has a flux efficiency of 0.25, mm. and scripted not reduced by armor 100 damage per projectile on non-shield hits. My prior experience, quoting from the, the comment, is that with a lot of larger weapons is that they tend to have either ridiculous burst damage with limited magazine, or they tend to be so flux inefficient that they otherwise high damage is offset by risk of overload. This weapon seems like it's solid all around, even if it isn't a shield cracker. It reminds me of the Vic Railgun's hard punch with frag damage type. Um, basically, what is the down like, what's the, what's, what is the downside? Am I missing that there's something that prevents this from spamming bone crushers, or...? 20 ordnance points is not horribly high, but it's starting to get up there. We, we do see a burst size there, with a notable refire delay. Hmm. This, this, I'm just quoting one of the questions, and I, I wasn't, I didn't feel equipped to answer it because I don't actually know Magellan personally. Yeah, no, it is, it is interesting points. Because definitely the the Pori won last week for Magellan, guaranteed 100% just by wrecking face. And this seems to be mostly unchanged. Ooh. So let's see. We have we have the Pori running the Bone Crushers and um, the Bone Crusher battery and the Bone Crushers itself. Um, the long fire LRMs, some quad auto guns for kinetic pressure. If we, and okay, there's some still point defense around here as well. And we're running a bastard sword corvettes. And we have the Kreshov. Actually has guns on the other side now. That was not wasn't true last time. <laughs> we actually got guns. We have at least have a little bit of weapon on the other side. Um, the three Jaegers running the fusion bomb launchers. Uh, three Graphs running Flenzers, Sea Whiz, and fusion bomb launchers, and some Bone Shakers. I think uh, this was the most SO this round. Hmm. The edges are running the Jit Fighters and Bale Fires. The 
fighter crowding as well, so it's nine jits per edger. Um, and then the three deckers and three Almarshans and three Yanzes or Janzes. I'm gonna say Yans. Biggest change of the Jaegers. Yeah, the Jaegers are definitely new here. What are the Jaegers systems? Chaff launcher. Mm -hmm. Magellan engine rebuild. Top speed is increased by 30, 20, 10. Fuel use in hyperspace, which is completely negated in a combat thing. The engine damage taken in combat is doubled. It's actually, it's actually interesting to see that, because... Sometimes you get things which affect, like, the strategic layer. But it, all, any downside of the strategic layer is entirely rendered pointless in this tournament format. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Like, oh yes, this, this, like, this, like, strengthens... Why? Well, I'll make you consume ten times the fuel. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't... we don't care. I do worry about the extra engine damage, though, with that specific engine layout. Hmm. Wonder if they're trying to be speedy enough to keep their front facing at all times. Hmm. It's, a it's, also, it's also a phase. It's also, like it. it's also a phase ship, so phase through the the damage. More speed, more likely to shoot the fusion bomb. <laughs> no. And then we have LOA. There have been a lot of beach, breach SRMs for missiles now. Uh, was it? Let me just scroll back up to what was it. It was breaches, the Froxes with a Sherman, and some optimizations. I didn't notice it was only a single Sherman. The so breaches, they are three pellet guns down the middle, breach SRMs. The heavy plasma drivers breaches there as well in the Lyon running Earls. The Osmonds are still around, which is very good because they were they were vital last week. Um a singular Edith and a singular Sherman. Just here for tanky purposes, Lighthouse PD. Flooded injectors increases top speed. Restricts weapon ranges, reduces speed performance. This is okay. This is basically LOA SO. It is quite interesting. So things we've learned from from LOA previously, they they can't back off. Hmm. It's not an option. Their, their long range game is very very strong, and if they go hyper aggressive, they could potentially do very well. So adding SO to this fleet, very interesting choice. Hmm. I'm trying to compare this with actual SO. How would you compare this to actually actual XO? Because the, the 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 range is less restrictive, the peak performance time is less restrictive as well, I think. Hmm. Yeah, restricting to six hundred is huge. That's that's a big boost. Hmm. Increased speed, the There's no different oh, there's no flux boost. Flux dissipation boost. It's just a speed boost. Is it still able to vent? No, but it doesn't say you have any flux dissipation boost. You're still allowed to vent. Okay, that's huge. Mm. All right. Because I've got the flux half as a different hull mod. Ah. With auxiliary thrusters, always love to see that. Mm. So its ability to back out is, is possibly quite high. It's, it, and because it's also running, it's running like magnetized plating, so it's definitely going to be. It's 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 the it's the tank, the little tanking Ooh. frigate. <laughs> See how well it can actually do. Right, let's reset and see how it does. Magellan versus LOA. Is the Pori gonna? Wreck face. So LOA bringing a lot of pressure again, but uh, that's a very wide fleet they're up against. It's a 4 DP 900 that's, that's armor a lot brick. Of <laughs> okay, here come the Jaegers dashing ahead. Really fast pressure putting there. Oh, he's going for the extra point! The siege cannons are firing out. Will it get... It has to back out. It has. It can't finish the capture. Oh, Osmond's coming in. That third point is going to be huge if they can do it. 
Osmond's come in. No, no, no. Pushed off, pushed off. Oh, I forgot to share the damn thing with you. Crap, sorry. I'll do that after this, mate. <laughs> I was wondering why you were simply a second, or, a second or so behind. It's because I haven't actually shared the damn thing with you. I do apologize. No, that's alright, that's alright. Okay. Heavy pulse drivers and pellet guns firing. So there's the pressure. One of the Osmonds is going to go down, though. Yeah, one of the Osmonds is down. The Graf took it out. So it's the right flank holding. How's the left? Those Jaegers are definitely getting the surround in. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the one of the Alistair's is kind of dueling off versus the Pori, and they've both taken a little bit of damage, as far as I can tell. Although it's only armor if damage. If this goes on long enough, I think LOA has a chance. Because they've got the pressure, yeah. I think they're just up against a little bit too much. Those Jaegers got behind, second Leon, Leon goes down. The fact that the Jaegers have got behind is making ships turn around. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's always huge. Alistair is now being surprised by loads of little frigates. It's getting ganged up on. And it's close range. A, lot of, a lot of EMP damage is being done, so all its weapons are pretty much disabled at this point. And it can't back out. It's an LOA ship. It can't really mm -hmm. reverse. You might see a risky vent, maybe? Nope. Alistair goes down. I mean, once the, once the armor is down, the Bone Shakers are terrifying. The Jaegers and the Graf now, however, have CR issues, so... This is the whole thing. Is it, is it going to last long enough? Osmond goes down. A Yans is overloaded. Third Osmond is down. All the Osmonds are down. Second Alistair is down. Nope, Magellan pulled through superbly. And outlast LOA. Good point about the CR, but I, I think with the amount of aggression they're bringing, the timing is about right. Hmm. They definitely got in there. The frigates were extremely aggressive, and that helped out a lot. All that's left now is a single... extremely survivable. Yeah. That was a, that was a shame. That was a 100% win for Magellan. Also, it's interesting to see just, just how... Mm. It, was, it wasn't clear before, but exactly how wide this Magellan fleet is. And again, when we're talking wide, we're talking, like, number of support ships or number of flankers, and I think this is this is... Almost all flankers. Yeah. I mean, those Jaegers used their phase to get behind the LOA fleet, and then the sudden ships started turning around, and LOA are very much all guns forward. So, a couple so of ships time and time again in the tournament, we've seen frigates go forward and the frigates die. They just, they can't handle the pressure. And frigates that can handle the pressure, that can keep themselves in there or get themselves out of trouble, have been absolute gold. We've seen it with monitors, we've seen it with the graphs. It's a extremely valuable thing to have in a fleet. Hmm. I think I think those Jaegers were a huge change or were a huge game changer because it started it broke the focus. Them getting mm -hmm. behind meant that LOA couldn't focus forward anymore. So the, yeah, but face, face ships are legitimately good when there's hyper aggression. So it it, it is a little conditional. Hmm. But the, the aggression was there. I mean, you had like an Alistair being basically swarmed by six, if not more, frigates at the same time. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even see, see what the very interesting builds. I didn't even see what the Kreshov did. The Kreshov wasn't even there for all of this. I don't think it was pretty much the Pori and the couple of the Graphs coming in there, but all was the all the frigates. I don't. I don't mm. notice. I didn't notice the Edger doing much. I didn't notice the Kreshov doing much. It was all the frigates. But that was very very good. I think we might start to see a meta developing with fleets going ultra wide with flankers, mm. not support ships. And then a lot of fleets going the other direction, and we're starting to see the, these super capitals start to come in. The sort, the sort of things where you put a frigate in it, even a phase frigate, even something with, with time skip, and it's just going to get obliterated. Overwhelming firepower. Mm. Speaking of which. <laughs> That's late, let me do it anyway. I should have done this ages ago and actually just shared the bloody thing with you. 
the fact that they didn't is just I just feel bad now. Um oh, God damn it. Why did that... Those onslaughts scare me every every single time I see them. Like I, I don't even care what fit they have, just the fact that they exist. There you go. That should be that should be being shared now, so. Yep, yep, I'm okay. Good. <laughs> so you can actually see it in, in real time. Right, okay, so we have Steve Sanaps's low tech versus idiopathic's midline. Now, okay, so breach is here. Heavy machine gun. I'm trying to see because the ships haven't changed as far as I can tell. It's just the loadout changes, if any. Breaches, heavy machine guns, Aegis flat cannons, and the the ballistic range fire of flamers. So three of these burn slots, <laughs> and then we have the moras. Yeah, we, we have seen how diff, how how absolutely critical the the, the range is on those flamethrowers. Hmm. Then we have three moras running. Drake Assault Interceptor, so Flying Devastator Cannons. And Talons as well. This is, def this is definitely new. They didn't have the Drakes before, I don't think. And a couple of Condors running Talons. So, quite a simple fleet, but very much leading into... Now, I, I, I am disappointed. <laughs> I, I have a very big soft spot for S.O. Moras. <laughs> not so normal. Something, something they can get right they're shield, up in their they're, face they're shield the shunted so Morris. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're aggressive, but they just they, they don't have SO in there. And I, and I wonder how much they're going to be able to get into the fight. Really start to, to well, push not, into things. Well, they're not, they don't really have the weapons. They don't, they've got flare guns, salamanders. And there's a single um, light auto cannon and a single contender cannon. That's the only real, like. Standoff weapons. They've well, got. Ne never underestimate contender cannons. Contender cannons can push through armor surprisingly well. I know, they but do you want to have an SO and a Mora just to have a single contender firing? Oh, absolutely! Get those <laughs> Vulcans in there, start buzz, th buzz cutting things apart. <laughs> I reckon they could do it. And we have the midline HVDs. Now, those that's not that's new from last week. Mm. And of course, a, a Devastator Aegis mix-up as well. So the Griffins are unchanged, I think? Although they have converted hangers with Partisans. Were they the last time? I can't remember. I don't know how that loadout on the Victory is going to play with the AI. That is Devastator Aegis mismatch, I think. Yeah, particularly in that configuration. Like, will, will they turn left? Will they turn right? Will it, will it be contextual depending on their situation? Or, or will the what's, what's, what are the what do the weapon groups look like? Um, a lot of linked. Okay, a lot yeah. of linked. The only thing that aren't linked are the the assault guns, and all the all the, the, the all the devastators in the Aegis flanks Ooh. are linked in the same group. So that's hmm, that is a choice when you see guns on both sides of the ship linked together. Um, yeah, that that's going to be a very interesting AI choice. Uh, and so. This, and there's three Centurions, SO Centurions running uh, Anya Blasters and Reaper Torpedoes. I love those Reapers. And SO, SO Monitors. Again, yep. Only one of them um, <laughs> doesn't have yeah. hardened subsystems. We, we, we did just talk about the, 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 the value of frigates that are able to get in there and keep themselves alive and, and get right into the fray, and, and these SO Monitors have definitely proven themselves. Yeah. The, 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 one of them is going to time out after two minutes. The other will time out after three. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the arbalists have been replaced with HVDs on the victory, which will give the increased range. And I, I do like HVDs. I'm a huge fan of HVDs. I I don't know. That is a lot of firepower. I don't think it's very wide. Like they they got the monitors, admittedly, and and those do good work. But uh, no, I'd call this. I call this. Those might get pressured. Hmm. I think it's like, will the frigates, when they get close to the onslaughts, just melt? Is the big thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Last one. Talons might actually do something useful. <laughs> in terms of uh, pushing the enemy fleet away and, and getting a positional advantage. Hmm. Also the drakes as well, so there's... 
I think it was it is. That is, one, that is two, a very questionable three, four, choice. Five, six, putting seven. Seven talons. Two carriers on the flanks. Yes, seven talons. Six Drake wings. Hey, Beric. All right, and uh, midline. I was, I was definitely expecting to see those carriers in the middle. The middle is, is reserved for onslaughts, clearly. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, here come the Centurions and a Griffin. Very slow to capture the points. Very slow to capture the points. Well, they've, they've gotten the thing that goes ahead of them. The, 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 the condor would, would hang back. Everyone else is pretty much on the same speed. Yeah, okay, okay. So because of the general overall slow speed of the fleet, it's actually keeping the fleet together. Yeah. Interesting. There we go. Oh, those flamers. The flamers. That, that, that is not okay. Devastator overloads on flamers and goes Centurion, sorry. Centurion overloads. I want to see that SO more. I want to see that more get in there. Okay, so this is what we see. Onslaught versus the victories. It is a shield shun, so the scooter technics will go straight into armor. Yeah, but that's a lot of flux for those TPCs. Is that Iron Beam? Yeah, they're trading. They're trading longest range shots here. <laughs> I don't have any shields. Ion beam skin. Just to shoot it, and it's disabled. One also is about to go down because it's a lot of damage coming out on that onslaught there. It needs to get into the face of these things. It can't stay at range. That's, that's four Clutotechnus firing in a single onslaught. They're doing the same thing that happened in the first week. They're getting peeled off, and they're not focusing fire, so it's every, it's basically one onslaught versus two enemy capitals. Second onslaught goes down. One more died as well. Now there's one last onslaught left, which is facing the wrong direction as well. And we, we really haven't seen any pressure on those griffins. They've just been able to, to exist, which is not something we can really allow. Yeah, they're just staying at long range, firing the harpoons and, and uh, the squalls as well. <laughs> and, and those yeah. monitors just... I mean, it's, it's, it's the extra insults, isn't it? That basically the flamer does less to fortress shields than anything else does. Because the flamers do explosive damage, don't they? I'd have to double check. I think flamers do explosive damage. They're, they're doing little damage. The overall DPS is very high. They, they are definitely pressuring the Flamers are energy, okay. Monitors. Okay, flamers are energy, so it's not as bad, but it's still hilarious. Yeah, this is a... A centurion goes down, though. It takes a centurion down whilst being attacked by everything. Here comes the Mora. Yeah, I think we're back to the basic question. How do you do with monitors? Was that, was that a bonnet to kill from its flak guns? It certainly <laughs> looked like it. Don't know. Someone has to double check that for me. Clip it or something. Find out, was that a monitor kill with a flak gun? But yeah. That was that. Yeah. Can, can, cannot allow griffins to exist like that. No. Like, very, very tanky, very, very tall fleet for low tech, and very slow. Very slow moving. So, just the Griffins just it stood did back. It like they were engaged. They were engaged the like entire the, the, time. The low tech fleet was very slow, but when, once they started to be engaged, they did engage as a block. They were all engaged all the time. Hmm. So, what happened? They. There's, um, yeah, monitors they monitors happened. Peeled. They were peeled off. Yeah. The, the, the frigates came in and peeled off. Same thing happened week one, where basically... That wasn't week one, it was week two. It must have been last week. But basically, the onslaughts just couldn't engage as a group. It must have been week two, because they, they weren't around week one. The, they were, the, 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 they're meant to be dealing with the big threats at the same time, whereas the frigates peeled them off, so the big threat ship manages to deal with the onslaughts one at a time. 
Not only that, I but it's a, a bit I... of a controversial call here. Ooh. Those griffins, I, I, I think they're actually a liability. I think that fleet would be considerably scarier without the griffins and with just straight up combat ships. Given the amount of pressure they're able to put in, given the amount of forward flankers that are survivable that they have, the griffins almost seem like a like a like a win more. If that was three in your face combat carriers, I would be much more fearful. What would you do then? If in mm. midline? In midline, oh, Falcons, Eagles, you've got good choices. You can bring a lot of firepower to bear. And mm. the Griffins are putting out DPS, but they, they can't tank it. Mm. So there is always the risk that they take pressure. It could well, yeah, yeah, it could, could get me wrong. They're, they're putting out pressure. Hmm. I think the point of Pixie Code makes is the, the AI reacts to missiles very differently. That's true. The fact that Griffins exist makes the AI incredibly worried. Yeah, and we do see that every time. Even, even small amounts of, of pillum, small amounts of squalls, small amounts of salamanders hmm. really changes the AI behavior. Uh, it's quite good in high-tech fleet where we saw all those swarmers. Hmm. They, they provide so much pressure in, in forcing the enemy to keep their shields up. But yeah. Because I think so we'll see we had a SR a Pyrophage beats Fury Tailed. SRA wins versus Scale Attack. We had a uh, high tech Pixie Code wins versus uh, Imperium. We had Magellan we had Magellan win versus LOA. And we have uh mid tech beat low tech. How, do we, how are we standing so far, points-wise, across the three rounds? I actually haven't been looking at the, the board. It's really, it's really, should, I should probably have been keeping a table. But what are we looking at so far? I should far? probably be keeping a table. Uh, look, <laughs> you we, probably we should be keeping a table. Is, is search, is search <laughs> it, it, it's not going to change the rounds. They, they're going to come at them regardless. Yeah, but it doesn't matter until the end. Do we, have, have we have fleets who have not lost a match yet? Yeah, idi idiopathic. Pre previous tournament winner is surging ahead. He's definitely, definitely schooling a few people on how to how to use the AI and how to have it work for you. Um, yeah, SRA is starting to have much more. Hmm. Yeah. The SRA happens. Yeah, SRA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Varder has not died yet. Um, it's it's interesting at the beginning of the tournament. You have a lot of tournament chat, which is uh, screaming, just yeah. just outright screaming. And then as the tournament progresses, you're starting to get more technical talk. You're starting to get like, no, 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 no. If we just change it ever so slightly towards this, we'll start to get slightly different behavior. So I'm, I'm, I'm really liking the curve that's starting to come out. Mm. A large part of tournament builds is getting the AI to do what you want it to do. Because building a ship for AI is very different than building a ship you're going to be parting yourself. Absolutely. Like, incredibly different. So a lot of it is, I think, because we, the last tournament I think was just like one, it was a one day, everyone got a single go versus the waves of PvE fleets, which is also very fun. But I think with a PvP over several rounds, there is a tweaking of ideas. There's 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 an approximate there's an advancement of form. That, mm -hmm. that means things get neater and things get. I'm look I'm I'm really looking forward to this now. <laughs> I, I, I've been looking since like since from week one I was looking forward to the next week, and now I'm even more hype. Every week I'm like I really want to see what happens next week. I really want to find so out. I think in general, the lesson of hyper aggression is starting to be learned, which is very good. Another one that comes up, which is uh, often quite difficult for players, is players need it to be sufficiently simple. You're going to put a gun on your ship, and you need to put four guns on your ship, you put the same four guns. Hmm. But the AI can deal with multiple weapons, with multiple very distinct fire patterns and stats very, very well. Hmm. So we might start to see that, that sort of differentiation of weapons, where you start to have uh, uh, something that's flux inefficient and short range, something that's flux efficient and long range. And every weapon is different because the AI will handle that and it will handle it beautifully. Hmm. The AI is very, very good at shield juggling, at basically sneaking in, finding that one moment when they, when they can get that one shot in because it's yep. working at that speed. The AI is very good at being AI. Hmm. And a lot of the tournament is don't try and get it to be a player, it's a terrible player. You'll never get an AI do, was it the helmet, like, using a single Excelsior to take out, like, a highest level, like, high-tech station. That's not happening. 
I'm still not convinced it's human. <laughs> to be fair, that's true. The helmet might just be an AI. Um, but it's a different kind of AI. It's not, it's not Star Sector base AI. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for this week. That was a very good show. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And I hope, I'm glad to see that you're you're at least well enough to, to commentate again. Because last week, solo commentating is... I was like I was talking to some people afterwards. I can do an hour solo commentating, but it's still more fun with more with, with, with someone to talk to. I, mm, I'm, I'm enjoying it, but uh, I am quite conscious of the number of times I've called something during the stream and then been forced to eat my hat. Oh, um, these have been some quite surprising fleets. It's like that'll oh, be the, that's, that's, that's the best be part. In this particular realm, and then the talons just evaporate. Like they do it every time. I don't know why. Why I thought they wouldn't do it this time. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's Caster's curse, and that's and that's that, that, that. I mean, chat wants that. Chat wants me. Chat wants me to get things wrong all the time. That's true. It has been very fun. Seeing, now, are, seeing are we... the streamers like have to eat humble pie is amazing. <laughs> are we are we roughly on for next week? Yeah, we're on for next week. I think. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, we'll... so so for underdogs, it's been a it's been a very sharp tempo for underdogs twice per week. So for Prime League, uh, they'll have uh, yeah pr 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 probably five days. So they've got a decent time to to test things out. Mm -hmm. As long as they don't try to get you to build like half an hour before tournament start. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, be told, <laughs> folks. Don't give. Don't don't send in a build half an hour before the tournament starts. That, that doesn't work. That's not going to go through. <laughs> the quote Wikifish from before the stream. Like it's not going to go through. Like you can't sneak in a, uh, a fleet without it being tested first. I did think about it for a brief second. <laughs> I know you did. Very, very brief. I know very you brief. Did. But yeah, Just I think enough to have some comfort coffee. Yeah, I think that's us done for this week. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much all for chat, for um, all the mod makers and all the all the players. And uh, we will carry on um, next week with round four of the tournament. Um, and then I think I'm back personally. I'm back tomorrow and and Saturday with more Pathfinder. Not to find Ooh. someone to raid now. Ooh. Let's see here. Who's actually live? I don't, I'm not usually live on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, so I don't know who I'm actually rating. Oh, Barrack is stream. There you go. Easy. I'll go raid Barrack, and I'll catch everyone. Um, either if you're going to watch me play Pathfinder, you can catch me tomorrow, or if you're going to watch it for the Star Sector, I'll see you next week. Bye bye. See you.